there you all are. A very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClure, and we are, of course, live on the big one, Facebook Live, national and international global talk show, the Scotty McClure Show, just for you, dinky do. Welcome, 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 I say. I hope you're well and that you've had a good week. Lots and lots to talk about tonight. So I will expect to hear from you as soon as possible. You just type in, of course, and there I am, just for you. I've got my glasses here. I can see the screen fine, but when I look down, I need them for that. So that's why they are there. If you think, why do you need your glasses when you're just looking over them all the time? Not a problem. Welcome, 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 I say. Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster on the world's top talk show, just for you, saying dinky do. We have one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for the nation. Jamie Michael Wells, evening you. Evening you, Jamie Michael Wells. How are we all tonight? Spread the word, of course. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that Scotty McClue is live on Facebook Live just for you, dinky do. Now, we've only got an hour. One hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for, as I say, not just one nation, but for the globe. And we are joined tonight by the good burgers of Yorkshire. A massive amount of people from Great Yorkshire Radio joining us. Hi, Scotty, says Charles McLaughlin. Good evening, Scotty, says George McBean. Evening, Scotty, says Anne McGugan. Uh, Wadge says Dinky Doo Scotty. Good evening, Scotty, from Sunny Stornoway. Lawrence D. Devney is there in Sunny Stornoway. Uh, all right, Scotty, I hope you're well, says Rab. Hello, Scotty, says Elizabeth Jenkins, and a lovely kiss. And Dinky Doo, says Ian Walker, and no kiss at all. Um, so that's fine. Hey, up, says Ian Walker. Hey, up, Ian Walker. Dinky Doo to you, I say. Lots of funny uh, little ding noises going on here. I did a periscope earlier in the day, and my goodness me, was that busy. So there you are. We usually do one after the program as well, a little apres-show periscope, you see, just to say dinky-doo to you. So what are we talking about tonight? Lots and lots to talk about tonight. Uh, are the summer holidays too long for a lot of parents? You can tell me what you think about that. And also, it's the marching season for the Orange Order. Now, this goes way back to 1690. And uh, very, very interesting yesterday, somebody was posting and saying that the Orange Order has its roots in Catholicism. So very, very interesting. That's your arthritis, Scotty. Ah, excellent. Thank you for that. Dinky do. So there we are. That's what we're talking about. And uh, if you want to get in touch, do put your opinion in. Uh, Arthur James Wrights just shared the video. Thank you very much for that, Arthur. Uh, Alfred James Wright. Alfred James Wright. Might as well get it right. And lots and lots of you on here. There's Great Yorkshire Radio. Fantastic. We say welcome, welcome, welcome to all our friends in Yorkshire, like Scotty McClough's phone in, just for you, saying dinky do. So there we go. And we will welcome them. Great Yorkshire Radio. I stumbled upon this fabulous radio station about a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, and I have never, ever, ever looked back. Yorkshire, get up in the morning. The first thing they do is put on Great Yorkshire Radio. Then... They put on the kettle. What about that? Now then, uh, who have we got here? Is that us live, Scotty? Says George Mullen. You are indeed George. We're live. Dinky do. Aye, George Mullen, says Angie Thompson. So there's quite a bit of banter back and forward with you lot. I see. That's marvellous, that is. So there you go. Take yourselves a wee while just to come and join us and get acclimatised and accustomed. Those of you who are looking at Facebook going, Who on earth's this? I am Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster. Why do I have that wonderful title? Because I've been 40 years broadcasting. 25 years, the Scotty McClure show, 25 years old. So there we go. I'm wondering what's going ka-ching all the time. So there we go. It's certainly not the till. If you would like to put something in, you can, of course, go to GoFundMe.com 
forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Or you can go to paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue, all one word. Uh, hi, Angie, says George Mullen. Dinky do, dinky do, says Ron Stewart. Hi, George. We're on at last. Lol. I think that's fabulous. That is excellent that you're on there. And I'm wondering if the ching is just all of you coming up on Facebook. Tremendous stuff. Uh, so let us know what's happening. No sign of a radio job yet, Scotty, says George Mullen. Now, George, are you fishing by any chance? Just because Great Yorkshire Radio and I are huge fans, that doesn't necessarily mean, don't go jumping to conclusions, but it is a wonderful, wonderful radio station. Get listening to it. You don't have to be from Yorkshire, because what Great Yorkshire Radio does is it brings Yorkshire to the world, and it brings the world to Yorkshire. You can get it on DAB Digital Audio Broadcasting if you live in Yorkshire. And uh, obviously you're on the internet online throughout the rest of the world. But you can also download the app and listen on your mobile. How fantastic is that? Good evening, Scotty Dinky Do. Scotty, my Facebook's been doing that too. I think it's a new Facebook update. Ah, it goes to ka-ching when, uh, when it comes up. So there we are. They're trying to repeal the sectarianism law at football. The irony is the Queen opened the Scottish Parliament, but a Catholic can't be king or queen. Answers on a postcard, please. Ian, uh, in actual fact, a Catholic has been king and queen many, many times in this country. It's just the most recent, I think it was the 1776 Law of Secession, um, that uh, that changed that, and at the moment, a Catholic can't be king and queen. But I must point out to you, the Queen is the head of the Church of England. The Church of England is obviously High Anglican. High Anglican is as close as you can get to a Mass, as close as you can get to Catholicism without actually being Catholic. So there you are, that's you up to date. Was King James not a Catholic? Of course he was. And his son, Charles Edward Stuart. Absolutely. Stacks and stacks of Catholics on the throne. It's kind of been swinging round all the time. So there we are. A Catholic can't be Prime Minister. Are you sure about that, George? Because I suspect we may have had a Catholic as Prime Minister. I don't know, though. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, so there we are. Answers on a postcard. Well, I can give you a verbal postcard, Ian Walker. I can tell you all about that. And I was reading yesterday that uh, King William uh, was working closely with the Pope. And what actually happened is much, much later, the um, Catholic and Protestant Irish people were working very, very closely together on home rule and on um, uh, strengthening the ordinary people, and what happened was William Pitt, the Prime Minister of Britain, said, I will use the Orange Order to divide and rule. So there you are, and the Orange Order are still pawns in the game of division and rule, I would say. Hello, Scotty, good morning, how are you today? This is Erica Dinky, do Erica from uh, Australia? That's tremendous, that. If you're coming on, uh, do let me know where you're from, guys. Who invented the hot pot, Lancashire or Yorkshire? Ah, now that's an interesting one. It's called Lancashire hot pot. But is that just another version of Yorkshire hot pot? We shall find out. The Yorkshire people are listening. Uh, they're listening in their droves on Great Yorkshire Radio. Welcome, 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 I say. And dinky-doo to all of you, you beautiful Yorkshire people. Aye, that's it, Scotty. No problem. So there we are. We shall find out tonight who invented the hot pot. I don't know if you remember the Scotty McClue program where we were debating the merits and demerits of stovies and whether or not stovies had meat in the dish. And a lot of people said yes, and a lot of people said no. So they are. I'm getting so many comments through, guys. This is absolutely incredible. Um, so excellent stuff. Hello from India, says Mark John Conway in India. Lovely. Send love to Mother India and to all our Indian uncles and cousins and aunts. That's what I say. You need stovies, says Angie Thompson. Yes, but is there meat in them, Angie? 
Uh, Tony Blair's first thing he did when he left Prime Minister office uh, was turn Catholic. Uh, P.S. I'm not a fan of this kind of discussion of religion. Why not, George? You can discuss these things. People panic because they don't know enough about it. McClure knows everything you need to know. So you can discuss anything like that on here. So feel comfortable with it. Um, about the orange people, oh, it was Betty Faye, the Rover, says Ian Walker, that did the Lancashire uh, hot pot. About the orange people, Rab Hill says, let them march and enjoy their day. Uh, due to much badness in the world, uh, top colour in the lodge is green. I rest my case. Hello, Scotty, says Glenna Duke. Um, what is this, Davy Diamond, says John Pollock. Dinky do, John Pollock. And uh, welcome to the programme. You're watching Scotty McClure, and we're absolutely live on Facebook Live, one of the world's top broadcast platforms. Excellent being with you. You're going to have to do a lot of sharing. We don't know if there are limitations on something like this, just to stop it going absolutely uh, viral bananas global. But it is the world's top talk show. Uh, do you make stovies? We use square sausage. Others use mince. Now there's Angie insisting there is meat in the stovies. So she says square sausage or lawn sausage, is it not very often called, or square slice. Can I get a roll and slice, please? Depending on which part of the world you're in. So do tell us. And also, did you ever as a child play a game called Ring Bang Scoosh? Apparently it was known in other places as uh, Knock Door Run and Chappy Knocky. So there you are. That was a lady from Ayrshire. She told me it was called Chappy Knocky and I thought Chappy Knocky was the place in Ayrshire. It sounds like a place, doesn't it? I know. He's free. Uh, Chappy Knocky. Uh, Sheer Scotties is Ron Stewart. Dinky do Ron. Excellent stuff. That is beautiful, that is. How do you think the strong and stable government are doing, says George Mullen. I don't think they're too strong, and I don't think they're too stable. It'll be very interesting to see how long Mrs May stays in office, how long Mrs May remains in office. I was looking at a, a booklet that came in the door uh, a year ago, just a year ago last week, I think it was, the EU referendum. And it was saying the government strongly recommend we remain within Europe. So there you go. Chap, door and run away, says Angie Thompson. Oh, you naughty, naughty girl. Knock down ginger here in Wales or Bobby knocking. Right, well, we'll maybe not go into that one. Uh, how big's your TV, says Aaron Mack. Why, what are you doing, Aaron? Are you going on to it? Uh, right now, yes, we played it, Scotty. You knocked on the door, says Erica in Australia. Fantastic. I'm getting so much reaction through on Facebook here, guys. Not just what you're seeing in front of you, but I'm getting so much other stuff coming in. Every time you hear that wee ding, I think that's a new uh, sign we've got from Facebook just to let us know that something has arrived. Hi, Scotty. It's Jenny13 from Periscope. Gerald Mackay Mackay. Gerald Mackay Mackay, I think thoroughly appreciated you on the Periscope broadcast today and thank you very much for all your wonderful support amazing so I shall say I like that let me see if I can click a like for you there you go how's about that that's you got a like Jerry right away and a very warm welcome to all of you tremendous stuff great Scotty McClure just for you saying dinky do Sunday night nothing gets past me of course ho, ho, ho. oh yes we know all that Scotty, do you think legal red light areas should be allowed in Scotland? Now, this is interesting. This is for the ladies of the night, for the oldest profession. Well, you see, it's an interesting one. The problem that we had, I think that people used to turn a bit of a Nelsonian eye to that kind of thing. It obviously wasn't legal. It isn't legal. But people turned on Elsony and I because it went on. And then around 1985, in came the HIV, the AIDS. And of course, that set up absolute panic because it had to be then, um, you know, brought out into the open because people needed to get checked for STDs and things like that. So there you are. Every time I knocked on the door, someone answered, says Steve Burrows. I know, panic. Do you think Brexit can be stopped if Brussels 
um, dealt on the immigration. Can I tell you what I've come up with, guys? I think Brexit is just at great difficulty, trouble and cost because of a fight in the Tory party, an infight, right? And then we got sold a lot of duff gen and we decided to leave. Now, I think that, uh, you know, on the fact that it was duff gen, we should declare that uh, referendum null and void or purely for government guidance. And I think that Brexit is actually just a lot of expense and trouble for what we've already got. In other words, we're negotiating for what we actually have. We're saying, well, could we get it that maybe people, you know, could remain um, in, in the country uh, after Brexit? And you say, well, they can remain in the country now. We don't need Brexit. So I would suggest two things the politicians need to address. Or the economists, right? Because there's probably far too much political interference. They need to address Brexit and they need to address independence for Scotland. Now is the time. And really, I think what Westminster should have done, I mean, is there any particular reason I have never heard a cohesive argument against Scottish independence from anybody? Politicians, people, on the radio, on the telly, I have never heard a cohesive argument against Scottish independence because there isn't one. So is there any particular reason why Westminster isn't rushing to say, Scotland, we're just getting the paperwork done and we'll get you away, guys, and you can look after your own stuff and you can keep your own money. Keep the 40 billion a year. Hang on to keep the money from oil and gas. I know the prices are down, but they'll go back up again. All right. So that's what should happen. So really, we should be cancelling Brexit and we should be uh, granting Scotland independence ASAP. Now is the time. And I think if they did that, then it would see a big, big change. But Brexit, we seem to be negotiating what we've got. Aaron Mack wants to make a donation. How does he do that, says Davy Diamond. Davy Diamond, the quickest way would be to go on the Scotty McClue website and pick up the links. You can either do it via PayPal or you can do it via GoFundMe. And we'll go for an independent, non-biased, non-agenda media by the people, raising between £1 and £1 billion. If you're making a donation to Scotty McClue, the minimum is a pound. The maximum is £1 billion, but you can only put £1 billion in at a time, so only one on one, any one day. So if you're giving me a billion pounds via PayPal or uh, via GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue, only one billion a day. You'd need to wait till the next day before giving me another one. Right. So uh, we're being robbed, Scotty. Why can't the good Scottish people see that? John Paul Preston, the good Scottish people have been so trained and so trained and so trained to believe the unionist media, which is virtually every single bit of so-called MSM, mainstream media. And they come on and they go, oh. you see, for instance, Nicola Sturgeon is the first minister of Scotland. How come you're not seeing her absolutely interviewed about every single thing? During the, uh, during the election, we had unionist politicians on as lead stories. Ah, oh, yes, now tonight we'll be talking to the head of the Tory. Tonight we'll be talking to the Liberal Dems. Tonight we'll be talking to... And they came out with the same line. Did you notice that? They trotted out the same line. People are fed up with all this independence. We need to take it off the table. Just a lot of rubbish. News flash. Independence will remain on the table until Scotland is independent. And then it will be negotiated off the table when Scotland is independent. All right. Uh, have you got change of a tenor, says Rab? Uh, well, I don't think I've got that on me. So if you want to hold off, no problem. A billion drachma on the way, says Ian Walker. Thank you very much, Ian. I shall store these and wait till the drachma goes up again. Uh, we're getting rid of our fisheries. Sorry, we're getting our fisheries back after Brexit, which must be a good thing, Scotty. Well, yes and no. As you know, I fought for many, many years when I was um, in, in public life in Scotland, uh, on the radio, on the television, saying, where 
is Carradale? Where is Campbelltown? Where is Tarbert? Where is Oban? Where is the Aberdeen Fish Market? Where is Banff? Where is Bucky? Where is Loch Inver? All these, where are our fishing fleets? And uh, of course, uh, it's, it's taken a change, so it depends actually on the type of fish you're talking about. If you're talking about cod, or if you're talking about herring, or what actually you're talking about, because they seem to have ironed out a lot of the problems in Europe, and, um, you know, the, the, the seas were getting overfished, and I think probably our fishing industry would get sorted anyway. But the best people to negotiate on fishing are obviously the Scottish parties. Uh, you going any holidays, Scotty? I don't mean in the big hoose, says Bobby McLaughlin. Oh, naughty boy. Um, I've just moved here from Canada and loving the blue waffles. Scotland has to offer, I love your country and I love your accent, says John Pollock. John Pollock, you're very, very welcome from Canada. So there you go. Whereabouts in Canada were you? Were you by any chance in um, Alberta or Ontario? So there you go. Were you in Toronto? Were you in Quebec? Pas uh, français? Uh, Scotty, do you feel patriotic towards Britain and the UK as a whole? Yes, I do, but you must remember there isn't a country called Britain. Britain is an amalgam of Scotland, England, Northern Ireland and Wales. And I am a Scottish patriot. The last great patriot was Andrew Fletcher of Saltoun. And I used to pass his grave almost every day. He's uh, in the little churchyard at West Saltoun in East Lothian. Fletcher of Saltoun, a very, very famous old aristocratic name. And Andrew Fletcher of Saltoun was known as the Patriot because he was your last um, prominent member of the old Scottish Parliament. The old Scottish Parliament before we heard the last of the old sang. So there you go, 1707. Andrew Fletcher of Saltoun, look him up. Uh, it'll be £25 for a single fish. Well, I thought you said it'll be £25 in the GoFundMe, Ian. I was going to say thank you very much. But uh, a single fish, yes, excellent stuff. But uh, if you ever want a real top, 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 top fish supper in Glasgow, go down to Alberto in uh, Thornley Bank, Main Street Thornley Bank, pop in there, and wow, the fish is mwah. So there you go. Uh, hi, Scotty. Jerry 12 from Periscope. Excellent stuff, Jerry. Thank you very much. You should do another, Scotty. Uh, we oh, Another with the audience at Cumbernauld. That was class, says Raphael. That was a fabulous night. The Cumbernauld Theatre, an audience with Scotty McClure, a packed theatre, and what a lot of fun we had. What uh, I'm thinking in doing now is also going out round places with an audience for Scotty McClure and people can ask me questions and all that sort of stuff. Um, so there we are. Shug McGinty, Dave Hemsley, it was those Tory rats and company that mentioned the table. Absolutely taking it off the table. It must be the same table as the magic money tree, says Dave Hemsley. Dave Hemsley, I've been reading some of your comments. Now, do, do tell, do spill, do splash. Where are you coming from? You're obviously not a Scottish nationalist. So where are you coming from? And why are you objecting to Scottish nationalism? Because it's the most wonderful, wonderful thing in the world at the moment. Because Scotland, if it becomes independent, or when it becomes independent, has a chance of proper survival. So there you are. Is that the guy in the kidnapped novels, says Ian Walker? No, no, no. That was the Red Fox that was um, that was Campbell and Alan Breck Stewart. So there you are, Alan Breck Stewart. Uh, Dave Hemsley, yes. Albertos, I know it's says Ian Walker. Fantastic, you get yourself down there, Ian. Uh, Davy Diamond says, "Ho, ho, Davy, how are you? You're obviously a Lanarkshire man. That's the way Lanarkshire people always start. They're greeting us, ho, like the sort of ho you, uh, that kind of idea." Um, excellent stuff. So um, keep your stuff coming. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClure. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live, one of the world's top broadcast platforms. It's um, 25 minutes past nine. Share time coming up. Are we ready? Can everybody share, 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 share their videos? 
Very much appreciated. Scott is a legend, says Jerry Mackay Mackay. I thank you, Jerry Mackay Mackay. You're very, 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 very kind. Very thoughtful. Scotty, is it a Scottish Republic you're after or keep the royal family, says Alfred James Wright. Never, ever, 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 ever a Republic. Right? Always keep the royal family. For a start, the royal family are Scottish. We sent our king down to be the first king of Scotland and England. All right, James the sixth of Scotland became James the first of uh, England as well. So there we are, because that was 1603, the Union of the Crowns. And in 1503, we know James the fifth had married Margaret Tudor. So there you are, Margaret Tudor. And uh, that was the marriage of the thistle and the rose. What we're talking about now is not the historic side of things. What we're talking about now is what's actually happening right now in Westminster. Scotland does not chime with Westminster, and Westminster does not chime with Scotland. I mean, when the First Minister went to Mrs May and said, you know, we're looking about having another referendum, and she went, now is not the time. You know, in a very kind of I don't know, a kind of arrogant manner, I thought, dealing with the First Minister of Scotland, which is a very, very, very high office. If anything, higher than Prime Minister, I would have said, because it's the First Minister of Scotland, whereas Prime Minister is actually, that's a courtesy title. The Prime Minister's actual title is the First Lord of the Treasury. Now, it's very difficult now to get into Downing Street uh, because it's all gated. Thatcher had to gate it, uh, you know, because she'd ruined the actual Britishness of saying, no, no, you can walk up to the door any time. I've got a picture of me at the door of number 11 with my pound note out. And you could walk up to the door of number 10. You could have a chat to the policeman on duty, you know, and say, how are you? And do you mind if I take a picture? No, not at all, sir. All that kind of stuff. And on the letterbox, the big brass letterbox, you will see in beautiful script, First Lord of the Treasury. That's 10 Downing Street. And also the thing about 10 Downing Street, it was just an ordinary British house. Prime Minister a courtesy title usually given by your party all right i think i'm right there no matter how many times you say it the majority of the public don't want the royals of robert bain robert i have never heard so much rubbish talked in all my life by majority of the public you mean a couple of weak-minded individuals that you like to get smashed with in the boozer that's not the majority of the british public. You just have to see the joy on the young people's faces the other night at the Queen's Young Leaders, the Commonwealth young people calling in at Buckingham Palace and the Queen came in to see them and they were just over the moon. The Royals cost us 65 pence a year. It's an absolute screaming bargain. And the people that try to lump the Royals and oh, the Queen's getting all that money. That's our money going to us. The refurbishment of Buckingham Palace Long, 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 long overdue. The Queen was knighting somebody and a huge bit of corners came crashing down. Fortunately, it missed everybody in the room. Nobody was hurt. But that's how poor the fabric of Buckingham Palace has become because it hasn't had money spent on it. Now we're going to spend some money on it. That comes out of a certain budget. And as I said, I said to a friend of mine who really just doesn't get it, right? I was trying to explain to him, supposing you did take everything royal out of this country, the poor would still starve. The food banks would still be there. The homeless would still be there. All that is political. And it always has been. And even when people were working in this country, if you're working as a miner in the 17, 18, 1900s, then you could be living in absolute poverty. All right? Especially if you're a family, wife and family, and mouths to feed. So don't try and point the finger at our royal family. Hang on a second. Let's give myself a mop down. Whew, it's hot in this studio tonight. Um, so don't try and point fingers at the royal family and say, oh, we should save all that money. She should live in a smaller house. 
These are the administrative headquarters of the British state, right? Buckingham Palace, I think, if I remember rightly, was bought from the Earl of Buckingham for about 5,000 quid at the time. Something like that. So there you go. Um, it's the future, not the past. We're all too big, spinning ball, hurtling through space. We're all going to die, sad but true, and I'm an optimist. Well, of course we're going to die. And death is part of life, Ian. You should know that. El Fish Face is the epitome of arrogance, Scotty, says Bobby McLaughlin. My pal David Diamond's been blocked. He said, sorry, can you let him back on, says John Pollock. I don't think he has, John. Uh, maybe they should refurb with the stuff the consoles use on the towers. Don't be cheeky, William. That is a dreadful, dreadful, dreadful thing to say. Uh, the Royals shouldn't cost us a penny. Well, 65 pennies they're costing us. And that's only gone up. It used to be about 50p and 40p, and then it was 10p, stuff like that. Build houses for the poor. We're building houses for the poor, not the rich. We're not building houses for the rich. Scotty, you're still not seeing the big picture. I don't want to mock the afflicted. Your fingers need pointing. Ian Walker, you're not seeing the big picture. Leave the crown alone. You can mess with the parliaments, but not the crown. All right? And the Scottish government is Her Majesty's government, Scotland. All right? So there you are. The Queen came up and she opened the parliament. Nicola has to get her warrants from Her Majesty the Queen. Her letters are from Her Majesty the Queen. All right? So there you are. Um, now, lol, says Ian Walker. I don't know. The Royals are very hard-working people. I wish people would lay off them, says Steve Burrows. Steve, you're absolutely right. How many ladies do you know working as hard as the Queen does at 91? How many people do you know that, uh, like Prince Philip, is thinking and cutting down in his engagements at 96? Now, come on. Steady on. The crown's going to fall, Scott, is Ian Walker. Not at all, Ian. Listen. This has all been tried before. We divided Charles I into two parts, a head and a body. The people who did it were so cowardly, they couldn't bring themselves to do it till two o'clock in the afternoon. That's why you'll see in St. James's Palace, look up at the clock and you will see a black mark. That's where it came from, a black mark at the time that they put the king to death. And he asked for an extra shot because he didn't want people to think he was frightened. He didn't want to shiver the wee soul. A wee Scottish gentleman. And they put him to death. And then they regretted it terribly. We had Cromwell. We had the Commonwealth. What a shambles, shambles, shambles that was. And eventually we had to beg to get the royalty and the monarchy restored. That was known as the Restoration. All right, the restoration. We restored the monarchy because we realized this country was in serious trouble without it. The monarchy gives us continuity. The queen is our sovereign lady. She's everyone's queen. So don't start any of your nonsense. She's no mad queen, all that stuff that you come out with. The queen is everyone's queen. All right, working. Get a grip. Lol says Ian Walker. Ian. You don't even realize how hard these people work. You've never been wakened with a cup of tea at half past five in the morning and told, that's it, your majesty. You need to get up now because you're going on the train to Manchester. Mm -hmm. Did you know the queen and her husband are blood-related, as they say, cousins? They're the last of the bloodline. I like the orange order. They help with money towards building... Uh, Ikan Singh, it says see more. I don't want to risk it, Ikan, because the last time I did that, I lost the broadcast. So keep your messages nice and short. Yeah, Ian's talking sense. They're all on the road out, says so Robert Bain. Robert, I've never heard so much nonsense in all my life. So there you go. You're not listening, Scotty. You believe in the tooth fairy. The French had the right idea. No, the French did that and have deeply regretted it since. France has always been in trouble politically, because they don't have the king's speech or the queen's speech. So there you go. They don't have the monarch out at Versailles. If you look at the history of French politics, shambles. I can remember a cartoon uh, back in the 70s, and it said uh, it was somebody nudging somebody in the French parliament saying, wake up, you've been made president three times. 
Uh, so there we go. So Scotty McClure is not only listening. If you go on to YouTube, you will see Scotty McClure explains the monarchy. So there you are. That's for the dafties. So that'll sort you out. Um, it's time for me to go, Scotty. Uh, I was all the way. It's great to listen to a talented man. I look forward to listening to you again soon, says Erica. Erica, I wish you fair dinkum and good night, my darling. Uh, you take care of yourself. And uh, I'm talking sense. Ian's not talking sense when it comes to that. Ian can talk sense. Ian is not a dafty. But, but he has this block that he doesn't understand the monarchy. He doesn't understand the British state. And the Queen very, very kindly curates all that on our behalf. All right, lol. Uh, Dobby the house elf could make a speech. Uh, Prince Harry has hinted it's the end of the monarchy as no one in the family wants to carry the line on, says Alfred James Wright. I don't really believe that. I think that's your reading of what the mainstream media pump out. Take that with a sack of salt. Uh, we need to address the north-south divide. Would you raise taxes, says Dave Muirhead. No, what I would do, Dave, I would completely reverse what Margaret Thatcher did. She took all the money from Scotland and from the north of England, from places like Liverpool and Manchester and Sheffield and Leeds, and she took it all to London. And now you can buy houses in London at 100 million pounds, 200 million pounds, that sort of thing. 50 million pounds for a nice big townhouse. All right. When our beautiful properties in the north of England sit in the market for six months in a year. So I would bring the money back. Look at the time. Swan Hunters, the shipyard. Look at the Clyde, Scots, Lithgows, Cairds, all these yards. Ferguson's, right? I knew the Ferguson's very well. So all these shipyards and all the rest of it. Go to Sheffield. Where were all the forges? Go to Barnsley and to Grimethorpe. Where are the mines, right? The Barnsley seam, the finest coal in the country. Scotty, I saw a YouTube video called The Monarchy that explains Scotty McClure. Says John Paul Preston. Very good, John Paul. Yeah, you're a, you're a funster, I say. You're a merry japester, John Paul. Uh, you too, Scotty, says Erica. Ian's a, ro a royalist. Uh, oh, sorry. No, Ian's a realist. Sorry, sorry. I thought I said Ian's a royalist. thought you'd changed your tune, Ian. I thought we'd got through that napper of yours. Live and let live. There's too much badness in the world. Get a grip, have a banter, have a laugh. Easy, says Rab Hill. Well, that's what we're doing, Rab. We're having a banter and we're having a laugh and we're saying dinky-doo. Now then, it's uh, coming up to 20 minutes to 11 o'clock. We have to finish in 20 minutes time. So what I suggest you do is share, 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 share. Those of you who are not afraid of work and can type, if you can type in, I'm watching Scotty McClure and right click on the Facebook live page, pop it on, pop the URL on. So that would be marvelous. If you were the prime minister, would you legalize cannabis for health reasons? No, Steve, I wouldn't, because in actual fact, cannabis is very, 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 very dangerous to the brain. It causes a tremendous amount of damage. It can cause death, all these sort of things. So, no, I wouldn't be bringing anything in at all like that. Scotty, why are they spending billions on warships? If a war started, a ship can be taken out. You've got took out, taken out from a thousand miles away. That's like building a fishing boat without a net. Well, I'll tell you something rang an interesting bell because I heard a very senior naval man the other night talking on the radio. I'm trying to uh, think of what his rank was. I'm not sure if if it was the first sea lord or not, the head of the navy, but um I uh, I, I was very very interested in what he was saying anyway. I don't I don't know who it was because I just heard the voice, but he was saying that it's a floating base. Now, if you think about it, when Britain had command of the sea, going back a couple of hundred years to Trafalgar, Cape Finisterre, Cape St. Vincent, all these battles, even back on to uh, the 1840s when you had Palmerston in as Prime Minister, and um, Palmerston sent a gunboat, 
That was the thing Palmerston did. He said, Lord Palmerston, send a gunboat. It was known as gunboat diplomacy. So if there was any trouble from anywhere in the world, Britain, on behalf of its empire, sent a gunboat. And it sat in the bay with its guns trained on government house. And it said, we'll take it out if there's any trouble. While the meetings went on, gunboat diplomacy. Are you still on the radio somewhere, says Bobby McLaughlin? No, I'm not on the radio at the moment, although we're on the radio tonight because we're broadcasting live to uh, Great Yorkshire Radio. How fabulous is that? The country's top radio station. In fact, probably the world's top radio station, Great Yorkshire Radio. If you listen to Great Yorkshire Radio Station, which you should do, Great Yorkshire Radio, if you listen to the station, which you should do, it's a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous radio station because in the last five, ten years, you will have found your local radio has changed dramatically and it's not what you thought it was. So you put it on because you think, oh, well, what else do you do? You've got to listen to something if you're working, you know. But uh, put on Great Yorkshire Radio. You'll get the app so you can get it on your mobile. You can uh, download the app and have that there at any time. You'll get it online. You'll get it on your phone online. GreatYorkshireRadio.co.uk is the website. And uh, also you can get it on digital, digital audio broadcasting if you're in Yorkshire. Um, Scotty, the way you make about, about the guy that got sacked for having an ice pole scrubbing the boat. What are you talking about, Rab Hill? I have relatives in Leeds, says Bobby McLaughlin. Good. Bobby, email them, text them, and tell them to listen to Great Yorkshire Radio, the world's top radio station. That's the big one, the one everyone's talking about, and the one everyone's listening to. What the Yorkshire people do, first thing in the morning, they put on Great Yorkshire Radio, then they put on the kettle. So there you are. Um, what else have we got? Oh, yes, absolutely. We talked about the warship. So, sorry, I interrupted myself. That's what I was going to say to you. Yes, I think the, the, the warships are a floating base. So we've given up our bases. It's 50 years uh, this week since we are in, in a few weeks' time, 50 years last week, since the Argyles went into Aden, the end of empire, Colin Mitchell. He earned the uh, title of Mad Mitch, but he wasn't mad. He was the least mad person you could ever meet. Uh, I heard they sent British gunboats over to the Americans in the Second American War of Independence, and they destroyed the White House. Um, how would you destroy the White House? From what river? I'm trying to think. Anyway, doesn't matter. We don't want to be uh, don't want to be going down that road, John Paul Preston. But what we did, it was called blockading and blockade runners. So there was a blockade on, and a lot of the old Clyde steamers were bought as blockade runners. And a lot of Scottish sea captains, very, very brave, partly brave, partly a bit mad, they ran the blockade in the old Clyde steamers and made themselves some serious, serious money doing so, the ones that survived. The Sir Galahad in the Falklands was sunk with one Exocet missile. That ship cost millions. Ships are obsolete, like the horse in World War I. Ian Walker, if you ever see the film War Horse, there's the most incredible moment in it, and it's when this young public school officer decides to do a charge, a full cavalry charge on the German camp. Now, they did a lot of damage. They drew their sabres, chopped some heads off, wrecked the camp, and then at the other end of it were the German machine guns. Horses and men in uniform against machine guns. German machine guns, beautifully, beautifully engineered, probably in Krupp's works, right? And the German officer gets a hold of the British officer, who's about the, the last man standing, and says to him, you know, did you think we would be undefended? Who do you think you are? And I thought, what an amazing line, because who does he think he is leading a cavalry charge against machine guns? And that was the change, that marked the change uh, from warfare, almost as it had been for a thousand years, going back to the knights of old who were very, very bold, charging on their chargers right up to the last cavalry charge. Um, probably in the First World War, and then uh, Churchill, Churchill charged 
at Omdurman, the Battle of Omdurman. Yorkshire has a lot of lovely dry stone walls. Yorkshire and Scots people are very friendly. Absolutely, I've lived in Yorkshire for many years, and what a fantastic place it is. I love my Yorkshire people, and they love Scotty McClure. Slaughtered, says Bobby McLaughlin. Absolutely, these people were slaughtered by machine guns. It sounds like Brexit, says Barry Wayne. Yes, I think we should be cancelling Brexit, and uh, somebody should just say to Mrs. May, ring them up and just tell them you got it wrong. I mean, she's done enough U-turns. It's not going to be as if it's going to be a surprise. Go, have you changed your mind? Have you changed your mind? You know, I mean, for goodness sake. <laughs> so there you go. Um, anyway, Scotty, great history, says Colin Brown. Yes, I like to give everybody a bit of history because if we know where we've come from, then we know where we are and we can work out where we're going, Colin. Should MPs be charged or sacked for lying or misleading the people? William, I'm not entirely sure of the actual protocol and the rules, but I think if you're within the House of Commons, you have privilege, you have parliamentary privilege. And if you say something that's not true, or if you, uh, you, know, you know, said that, that another member was saying something that wasn't true, the terminology would probably be misconstruing the truth. So you'd say the honourable member opposite is misconstruing the truth, Mr. Speaker. Here are the facts. You know, you could probably get away with that, but um, I think you've got to be very, very careful. And, and I agree with you. I think we should actually monitor MPs and we say, look, if it's an out-and-out -out lie, then you could end up in a bit of difficulty. And I think we should have that um, because I was very concerned at the way the country... Well, sorry, just give myself a wipe down. Very concerned at the way the country were misled over leaving over the whole Brexit thing. And I think on that basis, we should be cancelling the, um, the, the, the last EU referendum. See, look, very indicative, very interesting. But I think we'll cancel it. I think we'll cancel Brexit and go back to doing what we were doing. Brexit means Brexit, says Dave Hemsley. Dave Hemsley. I don't know where you pick all this nonsense up from. Uh, you need to tell us, you know, are you an absolute devout Tory? Because for some reason, you've got it in for the Scottish nationalists, and you're not a Scot. You also don't have any great knowledge of Scottish affairs. I can tell you that right now for nothing. Right, how long do you think Theresa May has left, says James Dolan? James, I wouldn't like to hazard I guess. I mean, somebody asked me at the time of the Scottish referendum about Alex Salmond, and I said, you know, if it is a yes vote, he will remain for some time, which I think he would have done. I think there would have been absolutely no doubt about that. However, he did the decent thing, and he left, and uh, who knows, perhaps he may well come back. I think Alex should be the president of Scotland. Uh, so there you are. So you'd have the Queen, You'd have Alex Salmond, and you'd have the First Minister. Uh, see, there was a protest outside Buckingham Palace for We Charlie's Guard today. So there we are. Uh, we Charlie Guard today, yes, indeed. Um, so, But I can't understand why one would protest outside Buckingham Palace. Uh, I thought your carer gives you a wipe down, Scotty, says Ian Walker. Thank you, Ian. Very, very kind of you. I'm not in the slightest bit Tory. Says Dave Hemsley. Well, what are you, Dave? Are you a big Labour fan? Are you a, a Corbynite? Are you a great fan of Jeremy? You know, is that where you're coming from? And why, uh, you know, have you got it in for the Scots? That's what we need to know. Um, so that's that. I think you may be a little bit of a troll on that website, winding these poor souls up. Uh, why is it when we have a terrorist attack, we have armed police the next day? Should they not be out there all the time? says Steve Burrows. He says he thinks they should be out there all the time. The only thing is, if you've got a terrorist, I'm not sure. It, it's a psychological thing. I think you put the armed police out there, so people go, oh, there's the police, we'll be okay. But I mean, you know, if something went up, then they would catch it as well uh, from that point of view. I think it's a dangerous route when you go down arming the police because there have been occasions, of course, when the police have fired and, uh, you know, it's been indiscriminate and the person has been totally innocent and lost their life. So we're putting tremendous trust. I think when you've got any weaponry around, 
there's an element of danger. So there we go. I think we need to get the message across to the terrorists and say, what are you playing at? Uh, I love Scotty. He's a legend, says General Mackay Mackay. Mr. Corbyn is the man, says Dave Hemsley. Right. So you're coming from Mr. Corbyn's point of view. Well, you'll know that the Scots completely annihilated, or virtually completely annihilated, the Labour Party. And it makes me smile when I see um, either the, the head of the Tories in Scotland or the head of the Labour Party in Scotland wanting to be taken as gospel when they're standing up and speaking, because they're actually a bit of an irrelevance, to be quite honest with you. Um, I want to see Tommy Sheridan shouting for the SNP. We need more firebrands, says Ian Walker. Well, there you go. Well, I've never shouted for the SNP, but I have shouted for an independent Scotland. So there you are. Say hi to Tracy, please, says James Adamson. Tracy, dinky-doo from me, Scotty McClue. Lovely to hear from you. And um, we've got uh, Gordon Robertson says, a Corbinite. Is that not what you used to call white dog shecht? Yes, there you go. Thank you very much for that. Um, a Corbinite? No, I don't know. I don't know. This is a Corbinite we're talking about. Anyway, uh, I think Dave rhymes with Mick says Rab Hill. There was a guy years ago who was shot by the police because they thought he had a gun. It turned out he was carrying a table leg to fix a table, says John Paul Preston. Yes, you're right, John Paul. I remember that. Uh, I'm only a troll in your opinion because I'm not saying what fits, Dave Hemsley says. No, but uh, you're also not providing a solution, Dave. I think if you've got an argument, you need to provide a solution. So you need to say, you Scottish people are not right-seeking independence because if Labour were there, they would give you everything you need. We've already had that. If you remember, Gordon Brown came up and made a wee speech. Just, uh, was it the day before? The uh, Indie Ref won. And look where that got them. That cast the whole of the Scottish Labour Party, who had a tradition of being massive in Scotland, right into the wilderness, perhaps forever. All right. Uh, Sturgeon May and Salmon couldn't lace Jeremy Corbyn's boots, says Alfred James Wright. Um, I don't think you could include Miss Sturgeon in that. I think Miss Sturgeon wouldn't be interested in leasing boots, but she can outrun the whole lot of them. There is a massive, massive lobby, a massive lobby for Nicola Sturgeon to be the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. People would love that. The number of people that have said to me, we wish you had your Miss Sturgeon down here, Scotty, I'll tell you. She'd put the lot of them to shame. Another great show, Scotty. Any news about going on more than once a week, Steve Burrows? I thank you, Steve. There are definitely moves afoot. I've told you there are big, big top-level discussions, and they're going on with very senior media people. So I think very shortly, I've got a massive project on for the next little while. And then when that's sorted out, I think things will shake down and you'll be hearing and seeing a lot more of Scotty McClure. So there you go. Uh, fantastic stuff. James Adamson and 19 others have just shared the video. Let them know you appreciate it. I appreciate it very, very much. Fantastic. Giuseppe Bachetti, thank you for coming up and sending me that message. Uh, that is excellent stuff. So Alfred James Wright, Mr. Corbyn is definitely a remarkable man. I don't doubt it. What I think we're needing to do in British politics is get rid of hatred. Because if you hate something, you're shutting off an avenue of learning. Don't do that because you're missing out on the big picture. So there you are. The big picture, if I was going in with a manifesto right now, it would have two things on it, cancel Brexit and grant Scotland independence with immediate effect. These are the two things that I would be looking at. So there you are. Now you are talking nonsense, says Dave Hemsley. See more. Dave Hemsley, I can't see more. The last time we lost the broadcast, I've never talked nonsense in my life, and I'm highly unlikely to start now at the tender age that I'm at. So there you go. Fantastic. By the way, guys, just to let you know, this is program number 41, the 41st wonderful, fabulous program. It will be uploaded to YouTube. Get on to YouTube and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We've got almost... 300,000 people on YouTube, and we're trying to get 1,000 
to subscribe and we're still about 75 short so subscribe 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 every single one of you do it now do it tonight just as we finish tonight get on to the scotty mcclue youtube channel stick it into your google and uh, subscribe click subscribe let's get on there uh, you just have says dave hemsley not at all dave hemsley you're ha gonna have to wake up and smell the coffee lala so you're an old laborite eh? you're an old uh, tony bennite good for you i like tony ben i remember meeting him at barnsley and with an excellent chat uh scotty nicola's got to sort out her constituency yeah, it's a slum. If she can't do that, how could you sort out Scotland? Uh, so they asked Ian Walker. Well, she's already sorted out Scotland. Scotland has never, ever been so well run as it is now. So there you go. So although I'm not a party political person, although I am not pushing the SNP or anything of the sort, I have to say, I have to say, I bow to Ms Sturgeon's fantastic work over the last 10 years. So there you go. Tremendous. Uh, I don't hate red Tories, Scotty. I just make them a cup of tea or coffee. I wouldn't make them tea or coffee, uh, says John Paul. Corbyn is the man, lol, says Dave Hemsley. Well, there you go, Dave. Yes, absolutely good for you. Were you a Blairite as well? You're a great Blair man? Were you a, uh, uh, I mean, do you go back? How far do you go back? Do you go back to Clement Lee? All that. Scotty, if you ban the Orange Marches, next will be the Highland Games. Where does it stop? So let the Orangemen walk, they say. Why is there so much hatred over politics, says Angie Thompson? I don't think there is, Angie. I think people just get a wee bit excited. The ones that are putting out hate are people who are very much learning. They've just started politics. They've just discovered it. And they're using it very much as somewhere they can go grrr at. That's the stuff. But I don't think there's actually hatred up the top although a lot of the people in the parties don't like each other you know, it's a bit of the old stabbing in the back the knife comes out and what have you the labor lot have settled down a bit the blairites the champagne socialists have actually shut up recently because they realize that mr corbyn is the man when it comes to labor uh, i was a blair man says dave hemsley oh <laughs> so there you go bit of a difference there dave so you're a champagne socialist is that what you are? Uh, that's what's going on there. Right, so Dave's a champagne socialist. Have a glass of bubbly for me, Dave, when you're working out your next labour policy. Uh, that would be excellent. Now, how are we doing for time? Oh, my goodness me. Time flies. Tempest fugit. Time flieth. When you're enjoying yourself, time goes fast, guys. I always say, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Tempest fugit. Little bit of Latin there for you. Hate solves nothing but creates more hate, says John Paul Preston. Quite right. Get rid of hate because you're shutting off an avenue of learning. Uh, Dave Hemsley, the SNP are better, says Colin Brown. Yes, there was a time you couldn't have got a fag paper between the SNP and Labour in Scotland. They were very much mirror images. They were symmetrical parties. And of course, the SNP is born out of the Labour Party. The SNP is a child of the Labour Party, but perhaps Labour's just had its day, and the SNP are progressive. I don't hate Sturgeon, I just think she's misguided. And what way after James Wright? Because I've never ever seen a misguide come from her. She's never put a foot wrong. Um, Ree Corbyn, uh, he's always voted against the EU at all times. Just wait until the young crowd that love Corbyn and the EU discover that they are supporting a devout hard Brexiteer, says Gordon Robertson. Well, there's a turn up for the books, Gordon. Never a dull moment on here. I couldn't give a Falkirk about politics. I don't understand it. One and two, I can't spell it. Rab, there's hope for you yet. Keep sticking in, listening to the highly informed programmes. Everybody's turning to Scotty McClure. The televisions go off at 10 o'clock sharp on a Sunday night. Everyone turns to Scotty McClure. I see the schedules. They're trying to straddle big drama for half an hour to try and get people off watching Scotty McClure. You'll never stop people watching Scotty McClure. I can tell you that now. The main man, Mr. Corbyn, will be Prime Minister before we know it. So there you are. I think most people know it now, Dave Hemsley. So it's time for you to wake it up and see which way the wind is blowing. 
Uh, Scotty, 16 year old, should be able to vote. If you don't vote, you should get a warning and then a fine. If you want to abstain from voting, you should do it at the polling place. Yes, you can spoil your paper, it's called. You can just write something across the paper and that's it. I wonder who lets the kitty out at and in at 10 Downing Street. Oh yes, it might be in a flap. Do you get it in a flap? Fantastic, the Downing Street cat. Uh, a lot of Labour betrayed the Scottish people uh, and beside the get with the Tories, but there were pro-independence supporters in Labour during the referendum, um, such as Elaine C. Smith as John Popress and absolutely super lady Elaine. Uh, I know who you mean. Good night, my friends, says Ron Stewart. Good night to you, Ron. Time to dash, folks. What a fabulous program. All I can say to you is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Scotty McClue wishing you a fabulous week, a great life, and saying to every single one of you, goodbye, everybody, goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of waiter, zain, au revoir, and a cheerio. Have a gorgeous week, guys. Take care of yourselves. Dinky-doo and Scotty McClue has left the building.